Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, yesterday, I was supposed to create one of these um, cards, and unfortunately, <laughs> my AC decides to give issues when it's feeling like 110 outside, and uh, that occupied most of my afternoon. And then my emotions were all over the place, so <laughs> Ooh, couldn't get it. <laughs> Couldn't get anything done, but um, AC issue resolved for now. Um, and today I can create in a nice cool room. <laughs> I was not having that. <laughs> anyway, I picked up these dies. Um, these are spell binders dies, and I picked all these up from Amazon. And originally I wasn't gonna buy them because I didn't know what to do with them, but. They were great prices. I paid four dollars for this one, um, three fourteen for this one, and I think like um, four or five dollars for this one, which was fantastic because I mean, oh, y'all know that uh, spellbinders dies are not cheap. So, but today I think I want to work with this one, and I'm gonna do something similar. There's nothing wrong, guys, with um, buying a die and grabbing inspiration from from the front. That's what they put it there for, is to inspire you. And you can um, just take it from there and create something a little bit different, or you can follow it step by step and do everything they did um, and create the same beautiful card that they already have. Um, with me, I mean, the, the inspiration that I'm gonna grab from this is inking the background, the color of um, what would be like the paint on the bristles, right? I think that was a cool idea. How I'm going to place flowers, I mean the butterflies, or if I'm going to bring in something else from one of these other ones, I'm not sure yet, but we're going to start off with that. <clears throat> you guys know I love making my own backgrounds, and that's what it's going to be. Um, now, these were made to use with a stamp set that they have about creativity and stuff, but... I think this is also good for a new homeowner, right? Because, I mean, you, you move in and... Most people are going to paint. <laughs> so th that's what this is, um, is going to be. It's going to be um, a congratulations on your new home kind of card. And I think that's going to be pretty good. Or should I do the tulips? I don't know yet. Okay, I'm going to leave these two here. And we might cut them both out and see which one I want to use. I know I, I like the way the black looks there. So I'm going to do that. I'm not crazy about this one though. So we'll see which one I, I use and um, I'll pick my papers and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I chose um, the black for this one. And I was gonna say before I start, if you're gonna make um, this like for a housewarming gift, you can always make this die for the card, which is smaller. And then if you, you have a, um, a gift box, you can either buy one that's made already, but you can make this die for on top of the gift box to decorate it. I think that would look really pretty, especially if you're gonna, you know, um, if you bought a several different things and you just wanna put in one box, this will decorate it really nicely. So that's just an idea. Okay, let's open this guy up. And I love the way this brush looks. Now I grabbed some black paper and I went into my stash of paper and I found a piece of this, the silver that I was making banners with. And now I have this piece left over. I save those because I can die cut stuff out of that and all these little ones um, to decorate our um, paintbrush will work. I'm gonna die cut the bottom of this one in the silver also just to get that um in silver i like the way that looked on their packaging so yeah just grabbing some inspiration from them and then um coming up with my own stuff too which i mean realistically is gonna anything you create with these is gonna look awfully similar to whatever they create um because of the dye the type of dye it is um the only thing that will fluctuate is your background and what you stick to it, right? You can always bring in some of your other dyes and 
put different butterflies or different flowers or anything. I'm gonna get all these guys out. I don't have to fussy with them later. And these I'm gonna cut from the black also. So I'm gonna run the black first and then the silver and then we'll decide on the color um, card stock afterwards. But let me get that going and I'll be right back. Okay, so I picked some papers from actually Crafters Companion um, because they had these pretty pastel colors. And um, I picked the yellow and I think I'm gonna just take out the pink and purple for now. Actually, I have some cut already on the side that I can use. And for now, I'm gonna cut the bristles of the brush out of yellow. And since this um, die also has the same size um, bristles, I'm gonna pull that one out as well. So I could just cut them at the same time and that cuts down on my um, hours here. So let's cut both of these and they're exactly the same same die and I might cut them out twice because I think I want to layer um, some of the bristles on top of each other because I might pop up um, the brush itself or maybe just cut out another layer of that one which maybe I'll do now too so I, um, to save some time and um, hopefully that gives it a little more dimension I really want it to stand out of the background, so that's a good way to do it. Alright, so we'll run these through, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so those are cut, and I'm going to start putting them together. But before I do that, here's some food for thought. If you guys build like those um, little houses and stuff, because I know um, for the winter I sometimes make um, some town pieces out of cardstock and sometimes you need like I icicles hanging down if you cut these out of white glitter you could stick those like underneath um, the trim of the top of your house let's say this is the, the top of the house and if you cut these in white that will make some pretty good icicles so it's like even your leftovers from your die cuts you can use and if you're into the spooky stuff and you're doing Halloween, <laughs> you know, red blood coming down to the house. Mm -hmm. So that's only if you're into the spooky things. Um, I like Halloween stuff sometimes, but not spooky Halloween. <laughs> I like cutesy Halloween. Um, but if you like the spooky stuff, hey, to make a spooky village, that's a good idea. All right, let's peel these out and I'm gonna before I even start my background I'm gonna assemble this part because I'm gonna need to know exactly how much um, ink I want to put down in the middle of our background so let's get some glue and I'm gonna start by assembling these two pieces together now I didn't have to um, cut two of the silver because the silver is just going on top as um, decoration, right? Okay, let's let that dry. And then we could just glue this into place already. I'm gonna go like really light on the glue here because again, foil paper, you guys have already know what happens with foil paper when you put glue and if you don't know it turns to warp it a little bit so just go easy on it or use um maybe a double stick tape or a spray adhesive that's not too um watery okay that is adorable let me see if i can there's a design on it that really looks like a paintbrush <laughs> that's so cute all right I know I cut two, <clears throat> excuse me, of the little black pieces, but on this background, it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> All right, let me find those and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's done. I found the pieces, I glued them on, and then um, once everything is together, then I can make them look like they're just one piece. 
Um, these I'm going to wait until I do my background and I think after um, I do them I might either add some glitter or maybe some glossy accents just to make it look like it's a wet paint. I think that will look cute. Alright, so I'm going to get um, one of my yellow Distress um, Oxides. And I think I'm going to do fossilized amber because I think when it's or we could try mustard seed too on a piece of paper and see which one looks better let's do that now I think I gotta put that okay let's try the mustard seed and you know what I'll test it with a little brush Let's try the mustard seed. I like the brightness of it. It just doesn't match too much these guys. So maybe we could come and color these. Cover that one. And just maybe make them look a little more like mustard seed. One thing I love about this mat from Tim Holtz is that you can just um, ink right on top of it. Right. And then you know, all you have to do is wipe it down. There you go. All right, so let's cut our cardstock and then we'll come back and start to assemble. I'll be right back. Okay, so the card size we're using today is um, uh, a four by six. And um, I gotta trim it down just a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little bit off. But um, it's a four by six, and I've I'm starting to like the look of it. Um, we receive these uh, in our boxes from Crafters Companion, and I think they look pretty cool. And actually, this one's a little bit bigger. It looks like a mini slim line. And you know what? I think I'm gonna keep it that size. I'm just gonna trim this a quarter inch off of this the top panel, maybe right there. And we'll see just a little bit more leave a nice light edge okay so the finished um, size of this is going to be four by six and a quarter and the top panel is going to be, uh, let's see, I can't, hold on, I gotta, I can't see the little lines. Uh, three and five eighths by five, five and seven eighths. That's the size. The lines are super small and I can't see them even with my readers on. <laughs> I think I need new readers. All right. So we have that. And now we're just going to play around with placement to see where everything is going to go. Now you can always ink another panel that's exactly the size of this one in maybe yellow around just to tie in that yellow. 
and I'm going to angle that and it's just to see where we put our sentiment and these are the bristles so let's see how far they go up and if we use the butterflies then we have butterflies going up there then we could put our sentiment somewhere around here so the inking um, will go splattered somewhere around here um, and let's just get that done now this is not going to be perfect at all it shouldn't be it's paint <laughs> where's the illusion of paint and I'm just gonna start off light and just more or less where I want everything to go bring it down a little bit so it kind of shatters shadows our little brush so I'm gonna yeah bring it down a little bit more and maybe a little wider and soften it as I go to the corners so we have that going on Don't worry too much about it if it's a little splotchy. It's supposed to look like paint. It's not supposed to look perfect at all. And then we can glue some of the layers of our brushes down. Now I might just um, start gluing the, these down first before I add the top piece because I don't want all the bristles glued. I just want some of them glued down. I just need to really make sure I know where my brush is gonna go. I think just about there and the bottom ones I'm really gonna add glue to here and on some of the bristles just so it can hold it down I think I need to order that um, dotty tape micro dots because that'll make all of this so much easier Let's do the second one and I'm going to choose one that got a little bit dinged up when I was inking it. Doesn't have to be a lot. A little goes a long way here. All right, let's see, just close this carefully and then slide that in. And just hold it in place. So we have that going on. You can't really see it that much, but when you put the other layer that's a little more loose, you'll be able to see it fine. And these I will put on the back of the brush because I don't want to glue those bristles down. So let's add that there. And let's find our other one. I don't know where I tossed it. Okay. So now you'll have the loose bristles on top and then the glue ones on the bottom so it gives a, a fuller brush effect right yeah kind of liking that now you can decide if you want to add more ink which I do to this corner but lightly So we have that going on and then the 
this will go here. Now I'm going to hold off uh, merely gluing this down because I want to put some glossy accents on the bristles. And for that I'm just going to bring a piece of cardstock because I don't want to get that all over my, my glass mat. Because then I have to scrub. <laughs> and let me see if it's working. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so our glossy accents are already drying and I'm gonna show you that. So I just took the glossy accents and put it on the brush and it's, if you can see it, I don't know if you can, oh there, a little bit. A little bit of shine to um, the brush just to have it pop out a little bit from the card. So I'm gonna glue this down already. And I gotta see what I'm doing. It's not gonna be perfectly on top of it because I want the other bristles on the bottom to show. Just give me one second. Okay, so um, I'm gonna be working on the butterflies now. And what I'm gonna do is that I, I was gonna originally cut it out of paper, but I think I'm just gonna ink because um, I want more vibrant colors. I think I'm just gonna ink um, spots where I would cut out um, one of the butterflies. I think that's gonna work best for this project. So I'm gonna take first the Mermaid Lagoon and I'm really gonna saturate this and make sure that where I ink is really dark because I want my butterflies to really pop. And now we're gonna take the purple. Oh, yeah, let's do purple. Mm. I already took out the brushes. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut out several of um, the butterflies and then I'll decide which ones I want to use. All right. And you could always bring it in to see if they're going to fit. This one's gonna need more purple. Okay, I think that's good. And this is also a good way to use up um, your scraps. So if you have tons of scrap paper, as I do, lying around, use them for these little dies. And you can use, um, regular pigment inks and stuff you don't necessarily have to use the oxides but since this is what I have out I'm just gonna use that up and just carve pumpkin colors super pretty okay I'm gonna cut these out and then um, I'll see if I need more and then I'll cut them out as well so we don't waste too much time with this. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I want to splatter some um, of this shimmer ink from Crafters Companion and I'm just going to cover up my paintbrush, the bottom part of it, so it doesn't get it. And I'm just going to have at it. <laughs> Let's just splatter, just to add a little more um, interest to the card. I think that's good. And now we're going to let that dry. And that should add a little shimmer to it because this is a, a, a sparkle ink. Um, but it didn't get on my, see, use the the actual dye covered it up and there's none on the actual paintbrush. You can add a different color, but since I'm gonna add a lot of color with the butterflies, I just wanted to keep at least the background um, in just white and yellow. So I'm really gonna let that dry up before I um, and do anything else to it. I already cut out 
all of the butterflies and once that dries I'm gonna find the sentiment and then we're gonna assemble the card and we'll be done yay not like my other projects the last couple of days <laughs> all right guys I'm gonna pause it here and I'll be right back okay so my ink is dry and I cut out um, I have the better press um, from Spellbinders and um, one of their sets came with these uh, banner dies. So I cut them out all just in black just because I want to layer something in the back of the congratulations. Now I had done these on a previous video that I said that I was going to store them and yeah they came in handy now because all I have to do is go into my little box and I have all kinds of sentiment ready to go. But what I didn't think about was having a background layer which I think now I'm going to cut them out in different colors. So if I ever want to layer things up, I can easily do that with these guys. Okay. So I just need to find one that's a tad bit bigger than this. And I think I already found it. <laughs> so then we can just um, layer this up and then we could decide later if we want to just cut out leave it like this or maybe just bring it to the corner and cut out the edge so it's a little more flat and I think I'm liking that better so I think I am gonna do that so it'll just come out from like the corner so let's glue this down so then it has enough time to dry before I trim it um, yeah these little these little dies came in super handy I can't wait until they come out with the holiday version of these because um to have this in different colors and make it easy just to like um cut out a whole bunch at the same time that'd be great i'm actually gonna lift this up a little so you can see some of the black and when that dries i use my eraser to get rid of that so then later i'm just gonna trim this down and we're gonna butt it up to the edge but we're gonna set this aside right now so it can dry and now we can decide where we're gonna put our butterflies and actually shape them a little bit because um, they're just a little too flat. <laughs> so we can take our embossing folder, I mean bone folder, and just shape those a little bit. And just a tad. And then we can just lift them up. And then lift it up. So they look like they're kind of like flying a little bit. And I think those are going to look super cute. We can add glossy accents to some of them after everything is glued down. Just because I don't think I'm going to want to move this much afterwards. <laughs> okay. So let's do the same thing with our other ones. And just curl it a little bit down before we kind of pop them up a little bit. And just hold it in the center so you get a pretty good um, lift without creasing everything else too much we just got to decide where we're going to put everything at and if we're going to use all of them i'm kind of leaning towards this one and maybe some of the smaller butterflies i don't know if i'm crazy about that one though so i guess i could put it in so just just carefully bring these up so you don't get too much of a wrinkle in the middle and then we could put these in different sections just figuring out exactly how and where and if you ever need inspiration you can always go back and get inspiration from there but I don't want that many butterflies maybe I'll put one here like they have it like underneath a little bit maybe put that one there put another one down here perhaps one there we can add a purple one somewhere in the center here and we could put one more maybe down here or do we want to keep them all up there let's see maybe that way maybe this is probably the hardest part, just figuring out where you're going to put all your butterflies and whatnot. I don't want it covering that much of the brush. So maybe let's swap these guys out. Mm. 
maybe there. I think that's pretty cute. And let me just bring this one down more and move the guy off to the side more. I think I like that better. And then we could add gems and stuff. Um, so let's glue some of these guys down. My black paper is like mm, letting out a little bit of little strings and stuff, but I'll fix that later. Dust that all off. Uh, this, oh, let's go this way. Okay. And let's put this guy in here. this way maybe there there we hold that in place and we could put this guy maybe right there or next to it I think I want it next to it maybe down where, where I had it originally and then we'll place that one there. And now we're going to glue this one down and then we'll give it enough time to dry before trimming it off. So we're going to put it more or less there and make sure that it is straight. That's pretty good. And once that settles, we're going to um, go ahead and trim it now i'm gonna cut another piece of cardstock um a little bit smaller than six by i mean four by six to add some yellow or a different color back into it so let me get that going and i'll be right back okay so i originally thought i was going to go with the yellow but i think i'm going to go with the black just to make it really pop out so i'm going to glue our first layer down If you want more of a clean look, then don't put the extra splatter of ink around it. I guess I, I'm going with how I paint and paint ends up everywhere. So <laughs> I just had to add it. Let's see. That's pretty good. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. And now we can add, oh no, it was a little longer here. That's fine, I can still see it. All right, let's just go with it. It's actually a piece of the card that I didn't cut properly. All right. And now we're gonna put this layer on. And it says congratulations, but inside it's going to stay on your new home. And um, I think it made for a pretty card. Um, I'll make sure that I take pretty good pictures of it just so you can see the, the sparkle in the inks. And then um, my last thing that I would do is I would take my glossy accents if I could ever find them. You guys know how it is. You start using one thing, you toss the other thing to the side, and then everything has been lost forever. <laughs> it's like your table eats it up. Let me find my glossy accents. I'll be right back. As always, it's lost in my face right there. Okay, so I'm just going to add some glossy accents to the body of these guys. And then I'm going to find some little gems and stuff to put in the middle of the other ones. So they don't look so plain. Let's do this first. That really makes a big difference. Just the way it pops. It kind of looks like enamel. I love that. So yeah, I'll add some gems to this and I'll take some 
pictures and um you guys will see the finished um result and better lighting <laughs> all right guys i'll talk to you soon um i should be making another video maybe tonight or tomorrow i'm trying to get in the um habit of doing them on a regular basis so i'll talk to you soon all right okay bye